other Sahaba radiallahu anhum, when they were persecuted, Allah allowed them to migrate to Medina Munawwara. They went to Medina. When they went to Medina, a few years prior to the main event of the Hijrah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to meet the people of Medina. And he met a few of them. He sent with them Musab ibn Umair radiallahu anh, in order to teach them, in order for them to prepare the place for the arrival of the Muslims from Mecca. Who were they? Were they relatives? No. They were totally different people, different tribes, different paths of Hijaz, completely Mecca and Medina. Medina, there was the Aus and the Khazraj, the tribes here. And in Mecca, there was Quraysh, different tribes. These people, without knowing the others, were prepared and proved it later on to open their homes to accept another family of people whom they had zero connection with besides La ilaha illallah. That was the only connection they had. They said, because we have this connection, I'm going to open my home. You're going to be welcome here. I'm going to share my wealth with you. We don't want to use the term refugee. We're going to use the word Mu'akha. You are my brother in Islam. Allahu Akbar. That's why when we see you say my brother, my sister, I say that a lot because it is the most honorable connection between you and I, my brother, my sister. The most honorable, I'm connected to you. So that was termed Mu'akha. They opened their homes. Imagine you own your house or you're paying the rent of your own home. Would you be prepared to open your house for your mother-in-law? Sorry, sorry. Would you be prepared to open your house for any stranger? You wouldn't even be prepared to open your house for a family member, the mother of the one whom you claim the love of my life, right? The one who gave birth to the love of your life is a public enemy number one. Since when? You, if you're a true Muslim, you know what I'm saying, right? I almost uttered the word, but I didn't. Wallahi, respect them, honor them. There will be misunderstandings. That's part of your challenge. Allah chose that for you as one of the issues you're going to face on earth. You don't want it? Well, something else might come in your life that's going to be even bigger than that. Wallahi, I know of cases of people who've told me, and, and this is not a generalization. It's a particular case. And there are some cases because I really don't want to force you to live with those whom perhaps you really are living in an extremely toxic situation. I don't want to force that, but I want to just make you think for a moment. I've come across someone who told me I really struggled living in the broader extended family without naming exactly who they were living with. But they say as a result of that, when my children grew up, they had manners, they had the dean, they had so much more, they were protected. And there was so much that happened because we were all together. And I've seen my own sister, this person is saying, did the opposite. And you know what? They are struggling with their kids and they're doing this. I said, you know what? It's one example. Thank Allah that Allah has protected you. But I'm not saying that what your sister did was wrong. That was a test for her from Allah differently. But the point being raised is sometimes you didn't want one test. Allah says, no problem. You, you really making a dua for me for this. Okay. You, you're crying again and again and again. Okay. Because of your dua, I'm going to grant what you want to you. But now there's a slightly bigger thing coming in your direction. Allahu Akbar. That does not mean don't make dua. All that means is just thank Allah. Oh Allah, while I ask you to alleviate my suffering, if you know that this is the best situation I'm ever going to be in, then let me remain in it.